Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 and I know it's been forever. Uh, I've been busy uh, with uh, grad school and whatnot and I'm a, I'm a laboratory research assistant now and I have all these new newfound responsibilities so unfortunately I haven't been able to really put videos up. But now is winter break so I decided to get something up. Uh, I'm really excited and you can see exactly what it is right here. Um, it is the Game Boy printer, and I actually have two of these. I have one in the original box with the manual and everything like that that I'm not going to touch. And this guy uh, is the second one that I got, which is in slightly more beat-up condition. Got them both both off eBay sometime last year and just decided I wanted to tear something down today for you guys, and this is it. So what, my roommate, uh, you may... Um, you probably know him as the soup eater from the pro previous uh, teardown videos. He's always eating something when I'm making the videos with him. But uh, we both went in half and half bought a uh, a roll of thermal paper, which was twice as wide as this, um, and then cut it in half so that we each have a ginormous roll of thermal paper. <laughs> you can see the hacksaw marks here, but it works uh, because this is kind of an odd size, uh, like receipt paper is much wider, much too wide to fit in this. Um, and the paper that comes with this, uh, that came with this guy, and even the ones that you can buy off eBay, they're starting to age. Well, I mean, they are aged to the point where you can barely uh, see. I printed out, let's see if I can get this out. I've printed out just the test image, and you could barely see that. If, uh, yeah, you can barely even see that. And plus the sticky backing is entirely gone. But here on this thermal uh, paper, works perfectly. There we go. So to do that, you just um, press and hold uh, the the button right here. Come on, autofocus. Uh, you press and hold uh, this button right here for the, uh, the paper feed while turning on power, and it will, you know... Uh, print out that test image there. Uh, battery image there, or uh, LED there, power switch. Uh, the link cable uh, port is on the side here, so you can link it up with your Game Boy, and certain games support printing. Unfortunately, I do not own really any of those games, nor do I have an original link cable. So I'm planning on probably modifying this. Um, I found a site online, they uh, go through the serial protocol, so I'm going to try bit banging it, and then so I can print out bitmap images from like a PIC microprocessor. So anyway, batteries. It takes a lot of batteries. Uh, so let's get uh, to tearing them down, tearing this guy down. I guess I've been yapping on for already three minutes. Jeez. Anywho, I'm so happy. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, six double A's. Uh, thermal printers tend to draw quite a bit of current, and. Um, so what you're going to need for this teardown is, of course, it's a Nintendo product from the 90s, so try wing So it's just six screws um, that holds this guy together here. Uh, let's take this guy off first. So fairly easy to, uh, to take apart. This guy, there's no clips or anything, just do not lose the screws, and you're good to go. Uh, yep. So yeah, unfortunately, with me busy with uh, with higher education, um, I haven't really had time to to do any of my projects. So I will be putting up a video soon. I have managed to modify a Game Boy uh, Advance TV converter uh, thing that you can buy off eBay for about thirty bucks to wire it up to uh, Game Boy Advance to to make like a tabletop meme Game Boy Advance. Uh, thingamajigger. So I will have details up later on that though. So to, to pull this uh, little plastic cover with the uh, paper cutter thingy there, you just pull up slightly and then you slide it away. Now there was a Japanese version of this as well and uh, my roommate has one of those. Uh, I do not however. I have two American US versions. So here you could see um, this is where the the roll of uh, thermal paper goes, it feeds in through here, and then it comes out the top like that. You can see the uh, print head right in there, that actually moves left to right as it's printing. And um, 
Yeah, and there's a motor in there that'll advance the paper as well. So let's pull this guy off. This just comes off like this. Uh, there's really, I mean, the buttons and everything are, are captively held in there, which is nice so that they don't pop out and fly everywhere. Um, you can see that motor for the, it actually uses one motor for uh, advancing the paper as well as uh, synchronizingly, uh, synchronously uh, moving the printhead across. So this is most apparent if you insert the batteries. It's really cool how these thermal printers work. It's basically a, an electrothermal uh, uh, mechanical machine that um, basically it um, heats up a small portion of the paper and then electro it, it, it chemically changes um, the, the material on it so it darkens. Only problem with that is the uh, if you ever had you know rece old receipts, you'll notice that they fade pretty fast just because of, of aging and whatnot. So anyway, a uh, nice little rubber button there for the uh, paper feed. But you'll notice that, yeah, see? As this motor spins and it, it, it's spooling the paper as well, it's just driving via this um, this like cam mechanism, driving the uh, thermal head back and forth over. Um, so yeah, other than that, uh, let's see, red LED, link port cable. Um, you'll notice a fuse in there, um, probably for input protection in case something goes fatally wrong. Um, that guy will blow. Oh, wait. Oh no! Okay, yeah, I see. There's actually a drive element, a transistor underneath there, and that is, uh, it's uh, thermally bonded to that. So yeah, this is a uh, thermal cutoff, and that's a transistor underneath it, so if that's being overdriven, gets too hot, it probably is a resettable fuse, so it'll turn on itself off to uh, to protect burning out that, that uh, switching device. Uh, you'll notice uh, filter caps, uh, inductor probably uses some sort of uh, switch mode. That's probably the uh, switching element for the switch mode to generate the higher voltages than is available uh, via the six AA's to drive the, uh, the thermal heating element. There's just two uh, flat flex cables. Be careful while removing them if you are going to. He says as he rips one. No, hopefully not. Okay, wiggling is much better than just pulling straight up. <laughs> Okay, so for this, I will have to remove said batteries. The batteries everywhere. So many batteries. Oh my goodness. Okay, I can't remember if this just yoinks out or. Oh, oh screw. Duh. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of uh, scatterbrained. This is impromptu. I just decided, eh, you know what? Last minute, make a video. It'll be fun. It'll be fun, he said. Uh, hopefully this isn't another screw. Uh, okay. Now I feel it coming out. Okay. So, yep. You can see, um, main I see what appears to be some sort of probably like shift registers for driving, um, the this cable here attaches to the uh, the actual thermal head. It goes in here. These are probably um, shift shift registers or something like that for uh, because this is just essentially an array of heating uh, elements uh, for selecting among them with a minimum number of GPIO available from the the main processor. Uh, this guy is a sharp chip. This is ST Micro. And yeah, that's all I can tell just by looking at it. Um, let's see. There's a crystal um, right next to this sharp chip. Let me see if I can read. Uh, it is 8 megahertz, it looks like. So let's see if I can possibly figure out. As with all Nintendo products, they, they're actually really good with labeling everything and even uh, lots of test points. Uh, makes things much easier to uh, figure out. So yeah, this section, as I said before, is the um, the switching power supply. Um, this guy here is the main processor um, output to the print head. 
uh, motor drive is probably accomplished through these two uh, these two switching transistors. Um, you'll notice that it just literally goes into there. Um, so there's probably some kind of H-bridge configuration or something like that, so it could uh, modulate that. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all that's in here. Um, pretty cool nonetheless, so. Um, you could actually, I've seen people do this, um, take this screw off, you can actually remove the, uh, the print module entirely and interface to these two connectors uh, directly and make your own driver if you wanted to. Or likewise, as I said earlier, there are sites available online that you can find um, the serial protocol that this uses uh, to communicate with the Game Boy to make your own uh, printer interface uh, driver. So that's pretty much it. Uh, just looking at, now that I think about it, at the uh, connections, there are traces running from this chip to here. It might actually be some sort of uh, memory device. I, I don't know how much it, it caches or buffers, but I think I remember reading it, it. It stores like a third or half the frame of whatever. If you're printing like a, a bitmap image, it stores it. So that's probably a memory device right there. Uh, the main oscillator um, right next to the, the driver chip as well. So that sort of makes sense there. Other than that, this is really, really simplistic. Uh, there's really nothing underneath the uh, printer itself, just traces. Uh, this is just a dual layer board uh, from the looks of it. Nothing uh, really complicated, but uh, lots of uh, surface mount components. Uh, I'm not sure when this came out, I, probably sometime mid-90s. Um, because I remember my roommate has the Game Boy Camera. And he had some fun taking pictures with that, and then he has a Japanese version of, of the Game Boy printer and then printing them out. And that was uh, some, some good fun that we had with that. But I unfortunately do not have the Game Boy camera. Um, I just have two printers. <laughs> Anywho, um, yeah, this has been... Uh, yeah, okay, cool. Uh, just see here that there's the uh, gearing mechanism for the... Um, the reduction so that you can get more torque um, for driving, you know, this uh, cam and and also the the spool, um, the feeding paper feed mechanism. So, yep, that's pretty much all right now. Um, that was a pretty quick teardown. I mean, it's a 12 minute video because I've been rambling this whole time. Anywho, so yeah, um, if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff, uh, you know, subscribe, like, comment. Uh, do whatever you guys do on YouTube, you kids these days. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'll hopefully be able to put up a few more videos before I have to go back um, to uh, to campus for the upcoming semester. But, um, yeah, it's been great uh, getting uh, getting some more content up for you guys. I'm I'm really excited. So until next time, I'll see you guys later.